first, this must not be taken to imply that something like the nation had already emerged in the 15th century in England, France or Spain. This was decidedly not set on Watson's claim. Rather, he was pointing to two quite different roots in the formation of nations and to the need to trace the origins of one of these trajectories back into the Middle Ages, a trajectory that was not really completed um, until the 19th century, as Eugene Weber has so well reminded us in the case of France and its regions. This leads to my last point. If it's conceded that some of the processes which enter into the formation of nations go back to the medieval era and perhaps even earlier, then perhaps it becomes legitimate and necessary to inquire how pre-modern communities relate to what we call modern nations in order to understand better why such nations have so wide an appeal in the modern world. The real trouble with the modernist picture of nationalism, assumed by so many historians and other scholars, is a certain historical swallowness. By locating the nation and nationalism exclusively in the transition to a modern era and treating them as products of modernity, one makes the task of explaining the return to the past and the felt continuities with an ethnic past more difficult. The balance between continuity and discontinuity has been upset and this makes the modern quest for collective identity so baffling. <coughs> baffling. Unless, of course, one invokes a catch-all needs to belong. But as we said that need is variable and in any case it does not explain why it so often attaches itself to the nation rather than other communities.